what is your approach to training around low back pain from Jimmy? Yeah, look, um, it, it's it's a, it's an open ended question there because it depends what the issue is with the back. You know, from um, is it disc? Is there a pathology there? Is it non-specific? Is it neural? Um, I think the first first and foremost is find out. Um, what aggravates it. Um, you need to find out what movements, what positions, what things uh, aggravate it. Uh, lucky enough that we've got some great physios that, that work at Athletes Authority and, and one in particular, Alan, has, has dealt with a lot of neural back pain, which is, is quite common, probably more common than a lot of people think because it, it's certainly the, the pain presentation doesn't always feel neural to the person, um, but often it can be neural. So one of the, the key things that we look at is a, a lot of neural flossing um, and doing yeah. some, some really good good neural mobility work around that low back. Um, bottom line is, as a, as a summary for the whole, is we load. We try and load as much as we can. Along your way, like if you had, a, you know, a mentor for years, have you had mentors or, or you know, is it more self-research? What, what do you think helps you uh, sort of develop yeah, all that? Yeah, a number of mentors. My, my two biggest mentors would be uh, my two managers that have been through um, the Giants. First one was John Quinn. Um, for those who don't know, he's a, he's a track and field coach, um, was at Essendon for 10 years and came to the Giants. Um, he was my, my first real uh, mentor that was also my manager. Um, yeah, previous to that at the New South Wales program, there wasn't really many people above me. Um, a, a, a guy called James Veal was working at the RIS program. Um, and to be honest, he probably, he was really influential on me um, that I yeah, had to sort of sort after there because... Yeah, with the, the New South Wales program, I was basically it. Um, so mm -hmm. obviously I learned a lot from the coaches there as far as skills coaches goes um, and how to interact and, and run programs and stuff like that. But uh, James View was a, a fantastic mentor to, to help me transition into that strength conditioning side of it. For the footballers that are watching, uh, like the young footballers, um, what are some important things, let's say you're getting a new client, he comes into Athletes Authority, he's a, he's a young 16-year-old um, and, he, and he wants to develop himself um, to help his game. What are some of the things that you sort of work with, um, with yeah, developing footballers? What are your pillars, I guess, or your priority? Yeah. Top well, it three depends, sort of stuff. depends what they're missing. Um, I think uh, as a whole, it doesn't matter whether you're a footballer, lacrosse player, and anything in between. Um, at, at the end of the day, we, we run them through a series of assessments to try and work out how we're going to influence them um, the best. Uh, for our program, if, if they're an under-16, they'll, they'll fall a little bit more into our emerging athlete program or our LTAD mm -hmm. program, um, which is far more general um, and focusing on key pillars of everything from you know basic strength movements, compound movements, uh, good landing mechanics, good change of direction and D-cell work. Um, then when we start to graduate into the, the more specific where we start to get a little bit more tailored to their actual uh, sport. For the guys that you've seen at the highest level, whether it be rugby uh, or, or at GWS, what were some traits that you noticed? Um, it can be outside of training as well in terms of lifestyle and mindset. Um, but what were some traits that you noticed that also you try and um, work on with, with developing footballers? <laughs> um, yeah, so probably outside of your pure strength and conditioning side, I think the the number one trait that I see in, in just elite players and elite teams um, is confidence, almost arrogance, that their best will beat anyone. And there's a big difference between that where people are confident or arrogant that they're going to win versus people are confident and arrogant that their hardest work will win. Because mm -hmm. I see teams all the time that, that get confident that they're going to win, and that was, that was Parramatta the first year I went there. They were so confident they were going to win that they didn't work hard versus mm -hmm. confident that your best will win. Because if you're arrogant to the point of like confidence, to the point of arrogance that, that you, your best will beat anyone. What can you do with Achilles stand up for you, which is 80% heel, but struggling to move on the last 20%? It's an interesting one. You're getting a few specific uh, rehab yeah. questions. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So it's a, it's a hard one because I don't know what you mean by 80% healed but move on the last 20. Is that, I'm yeah. going to say that you're, of 100% of the day, you're getting pain with 20% of things perhaps, maybe that last little bit. Um, I, I think it doesn't matter with Achilles, uh, patella, all tendinopathies um, are frustrating as hell. And the best way to think of it is once you get a tendinopathy, you never get rid of it. You always have a tendinopathy, unfortunately. I hate uh, to be the person to tell you that, but um, all you need to do when it comes to tendinopathy is 
the, the balance of what it can handle versus the load that you're delivering. So it's capacity and your load. So for the rest of your life, if, if you do something that spikes your load, that is above the capacity of your Achilles at that time, you'll get a little bit of pain. 